On this edition of Visionaries, we travel to Collegeville, Pennsylvania to meet with Greg Stewart, Director of Information Security with the global Fortune 50 Pharmaceutical. We looked at Securonics at the vendor shows and stuff, and we would watch the, you know, the demos again and again, to the point where everybody knew us. We would walk up and they would call us by name, and, right? And we would know the Securonics folks by name. There were pieces there that we recognized, you know, were clearly missing from what we do. And, and they were not things that we could duplicate internally. And so it was an easy choice for us to line up with Securonics. Now that we have it, one of the biggest problems solved is how to effectively monitor and analyze the volume of events, right? Mm -hmm. So having something like Securonics allows us to put a cap on FTE headcount, right? Staff size and, and staff expertise to some degree. Yeah. Someone doesn't need an advanced degree in analytics to find actionable events. It, it makes a, a small staff very efficient. It's that ability to do the near real-time analysis on multiple event feeds against multiple risk and threat models and bubble to the top those things for the analyst to look at. We take advantage of a number of the key features like the risk score, peer analysis, certainly behavior over time, cohesiveness of activity versus peers. But most importantly, I think, probably if I were to pick one, it's the, the capability to correlate events that are you know, entity-based versus user-based. Right, those, those events that don't have a sender and a recipient and something very clear, it's where you have like maybe an FTP transfer or an HTTP post where you're, you have an IP address and you know, that could be anyone at any given time. And so it's the, it's the ability to, to take those entity behaviors and correlate them uh, in most cases to a user or just say what else has that particular entity done. Right, that's of interest. And that feature, I think, does set Securonics apart from the user behavior analytics crowd, right? It's the E, that entity behavior analytics that's, that we have found very important. Um, I know uh, you've been responsible and you continue to run the DLP program. Uh, can you talk about what you're doing with DLP? Uh, I'll talk a little bit about our solution over time. So in the beginning especially, we were bringing in maybe 10,000, roughly 10,000 events per day. That's an awful lot. There's no way you're going to get to the bottom of that list. So you're, you're making a business decision to, to forego looking at things that may be important, right? Uh, and, and you're certainly never going to staff up to look at 10,000 events per day, right? So we kind of migrated from that to trying to use a, a SEM, right? So the SEM was good in that we could take our threat models and create maybe top 25 lists. And even that's an awful lot to go through because it involves manual processes, right? You still miss things. There's off hours. There are times when analysts aren't looking and, and things come through then. Actually funny, in the proof of concept for Securonix, uh, your guys were very excited to show us the very next day that like, ooh, what about this, right? And, and sure enough, it was something that was pretty important. The other piece of that was, right, I then had to take that and be like, well, wow, so that meets this, it meets this. How did we not see this? So we just never even saw that event and, and never put it together using the manual process, right? So uh, that was kind of an easy sell for you guys on that one. You know, I've heard people say this before about SIM being very linear and quite good at catching uh, network-based events and system-based events. But when it comes to other entities, especially individuals, it can be a little bit more challenging because it doesn't have those curves to it uh, to look for baselines and anomalies against those baselines. The ability to baseline that behavior, the, that trend over time, right? That's the piece that we, that we lose using manual processes and day-to-day -day reports. You may remember something, you may not, but you're certainly not gonna remember everything, right? More importantly, the statistical analysis around that, right? It's the comparison of that baseline to everything that a user or an entity has done in and of themselves, but also against their peers. We use static rules based on HR data, job function, and, and a number of things like that, management, lineup. So is what they're doing you know, typical behavior for them, and is that okay? But is that typical for everybody who does that same thing? And that's the piece, right, that technical capability that we, that we did not have prior to Securonix. I think one of the biggest things, Brian, is the, the concept of no longer having that hard protective ring around the, the data. In our space in particular, we collaborate with a lot of the same people that we compete with, so it's, it's not a very clearly defined line. 
So Greg, we're in the middle of this log cabin. What is this place? So uh, it's uh, an officer's cabin on the Valley Forge National Park. Uh, so birthplace of the American Army. Not unlike what we do, a little less sophisticated, right? But it's protection, right? I think of the protection that we look at now, the piece that's missing in a lot of products, and one of the reasons we like Securonics, right, is that entity piece is, is very solid. So I'm glad you brought up entity correlation. Has that ever come into play uh, within your own analysis? Have you ever discovered interesting things based on entity uh, analytics? Certainly. We actually did manage to pick up a, a device not long after we implemented Securonics. Uh, we saw it as, as activity, right? So spikes in activity over a short period of time. And then when the analyst drilled down into it, what she found was that it was, you know, roughly 10 hour intervals. A, a device was uh, for like 90 seconds blasting out all of these emails and information out to the internet. And so, you know, uh, although, again, we're a user-focused shop, um, here we have a, a device, an entity that's malfunctioning that we were able to pick up very quickly. But without that entity correlation, I don't know how long that may have gone on without us being able to find it. What advice would you give to other security professionals working in pharma? Don't be afraid to take the risk. Seems like a very big leap to accept and, and embrace a new technology like Securonics, right? Think big picture uh, and plan out your threat models um, accordingly, but start narrow and, and implement them over time. And, and I think it's a, a greater opportunity to ensure success. I think that's great advice for everybody in the security industry across the board. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on this edition of Visionaries, brought to you by Securonics.